This video is sponsored by Paperlike. I released an iPad Pro video a few weeks back sharing some tips to turn your iPad Pro into a laptop. Several of you wanted to know what other apps I use on a daily basis, and I figured it was about time to do an updated what's on my iPad Pro video anyways. So let's not waste any more time and dive straight into this, beginning with some new accessories that I picked up, as well as a few old ones. If you've seen my other iPad Pro videos, then you already know I'm rocking the Apple Magic Keyboard case. In my opinion, it still offers the best overall experience in the smallest form factor. Not to mention the design is pretty incredible with the floating hinge. It may not be the most practical or functional, but it sure is pretty. Regardless, 350 bucks is a lot of money to spend on a portfolio style keyboard case, especially for a tablet. Luckily, Logitech has released a keyboard case that utilizes the smart connector versus Bluetooth. It comes with a trackpad and it offers better protection versus the Magic Keyboard case. On top of that, it's cheaper. I'll link both of the cases down in the description as well as everything else mentioned in this video. I have the newest Apple Pencil snapped right here at the top. Uh, I even have my name engraved on it this time around. No clue why I did that, but um, at the time, it must have been important to me. I really enjoy writing notes on my iPad, and lately I've been getting into drawing and doodling a little bit more. Focasso. Speaking of drawing, one of the things that really changed the experience and made it a lot better is the screen protector I've been using. It's from the sponsor of this video, Paperlike. I've never been a fan of matte style screen protectors because typically they interfere with the clarity and vibrancy of the display itself. Paperlike is the first matte screen protector that I've personally used that retains nearly all of the clarity, sharpness, and vibrance of the display itself. It also cuts back on glares while reducing fingerprints and smudges. Most importantly, it enhances the Apple Pencil experience by simulating the same feeling you get writing with a pencil and a piece of paper. The gritty texture of the screen protector allows the Apple Pencil to glide much easier and with better precision. Plus, it even makes a similar sound to a pencil on paper. I mean, you really have to listen for it, but um, it's pretty awesome. If you're interested, check out the link in the description if you want to pick one up for yourself. I've added two new accessories to my arsenal that I've really been enjoying. The first is this 8-bit do gaming controller, which really made me appreciate mobile gaming, well, in specific gaming on my iPad. Um, I've connected my Xbox controller to my iPad before, and even though it's the same kind of experience, the 8-bit Do controller is just much smaller, making it more travel friendly so I can game a little bit more. It takes up far less space in a bag, and due to how thin it is, you could easily just throw it in your pocket if you wanted to. Plus, it works like a boss, and I'm really enjoying it. Next up is this MIDI keyboard. It's from Akai. Uh, the name of it is the MPK Mini. It's a super popular MIDI keyboard, so you might have already heard of it. I'm a huge fan of hip hop and music in general, in case you didn't know already. I've written songs and produced a few solo albums, as well as mixtapes for local artists, but that was years and years ago. And unfortunately, I lost all of my files when my older computer crashed and um, yeah, it really hurt, and I never really got back into music. Since I was so passionate about it, I really want to start getting into it a little bit more as a break from YouTube, and you know, do something out of passion versus out of like a job. Um, just It just feels kind of refreshing. And in case you're wondering, the doc that I'm using is from 12 South. I've talked about it in nearly every video. That's the reason why I didn't bring it up, but I'll link it in the description if you want to read about it and find out some more information. All right, so those were the accessories that I'm currently using. Now let's dive into the apps. And first and foremost, here is the wallpaper that I'm rocking on my lock screen. I'll try to link it in the description, but if I can't find the link, you'll need to download the app that I use to download uh, my version. For my home screen, I'm using just a solid black wallpaper, nothing fancy, but it still looks really clean. Opening up my utilities folder, the first app I wanna show you is the wallpaper app I previously mentioned. It's called Dope Walls, and it's free with ads, of course but offers a huge selection of great looking wallpapers. What I really like about Dope Walls are the built-in filters and customization options. You can apply a filter and then save the wallpaper straight to your iPad or favorite it and then download it later. Call Me Icons and Screens are two apps that I talked about in my previous iPad Pro video, so if you missed it, be sure to give it a watch to find out a little bit more information about these specific apps. Uh, the video is time-coded, so you can go to that specific point and then just start from there. In a nutshell, Call Me Icons allows you to create custom icons for bookmarked websites that are saved to your home screen. 
Screens is a way to access your desktop computers, whether it's a Mac or a Windows PC, on your iPad. I use it to manage my Mac Mini server, and since it supports remote management, I can troubleshoot or fix problems from anywhere in the world as long as I can log into my Mac Mini. Send Anywhere is easily one of my most used apps to date. It's similar to AirDrop, but allows you to send and receive files from Android and Windows devices as well. Now, the app is available on nearly all platforms, making it the most universal way of wirelessly sending files pictures, and videos. OneBlocker isn't so much an app as it is a plugin or extension to Safari. Uh, it blocks pop-ups and annoying ads, which really improves an already great experience when it comes to Safari. AstroPad Studio allows you to tether your iPad uh, to your desktop or laptop computer and use it as a dedicated drawing tablet. It's pretty expensive, coming in at $11.99 a month or $79.99 a year, and there's no option for a one-time payment, making it extremely pricey. That said, it does have a free trial, which I'm currently using, and it works really good. It's just unfortunate that there's no way I could take advantage of it enough to justify paying 12 bucks a month. But if you're a graphic designer or an artist, definitely check it out if you haven't already. If you have used it, do you recommend it? Uh, let me know down in the comment section. I'm sure a few other people would like to know as well. Uh, the last app I want to show you in my utilities folder is CleanFox. If you have multiple email accounts and suffer from an abundance of junk mail and spam, you really need to check out CleanFox. It's a free app that scans your inbox for newsletters, junk, spam, and other unwanted emails. Then it quickly allows you to double check the items selected, but orders everything by sender, making it extremely quick to clean all of your inboxes. I was able to do both of my email addresses in less than 45 minutes, and this includes going back into my accounts and double checking, making sure that no important emails were accidentally removed. CleanFox did a great job by only removing unwanted emails. However, it did miss a few, which I just went in and deleted manually. You do have to allow permission for the app to access your email accounts, of course, which may put some people off, but so far I've had zero security issues or any additional spam. Diving into my productivity folder, the first app I wanna show you is Nebo. If you like to handwrite your notes versus typing them, you for sure need to check out Nebo. It converts handwriting to text and it's extremely accurate. It even recognized my cursive the majority of the time, which is really saying something. Uh, from there, you can export the document so you can view it and edit it in other apps like Microsoft Word. The other productivity app I've been using a lot is Danger Notes. Unlike other note-taking apps that allow you to save your progress anytime or even have an autosave feature built inside the app, Danger Notes aims to eliminate distractions by forcing you to work. Once you start typing a note, you can't save until a certain block of time has lapsed. Uh, that block of time can be adjusted. Currently, I have mine set up for five minutes. This means I can't save my note until five minutes have passed. Uh, to go a step further, if you stop typing, you're given just a few seconds to start typing again. Otherwise, you'll see a progress bar start to fill up at the top of the screen. If you stop typing too long and that progress bar fills, you lose all of your work. It just deletes everything. It doesn't save. And then it'll take you back to your previous save position. So if you don't have a save position, you gotta go back to square one. It's an interesting way of taking notes and getting your thoughts out there by forcing you to remain focused on your work since once you start a document, you can't stop until you get everything out that you need to get out. Uh, I've been using it and it's helped me with writer's block a few times as well as just staying focused on my work. Bouncing into my video editing folder, there's only two apps that I really wanna talk about since I covered everything else in that previous video. The first app is Emulsion, which stabilizes shaky footage. It's gonna work with some DSLR and mirrorless camera files, but not all. Trust me, I've tried several and some of them didn't work. Uh, however, it works excellent with videos taken with the iPhone. The second app is Mavio, which will clean up your audio. OcuSonos creates the app, which is saying something. If you're not familiar, they create award-winning plugins for desktop NLEs and audio software. Uh, Mavio has tools to clean up noise and improve the quality of your audio with just a click of a button. Initially, it was a little buggy and I had several issues and it really didn't do a good job, but after the last update, I've gotten incredible results. Paper is a really nice app for creating handwritten notes, drawing, doodling, and creating diagrams. There's a lot more that it's capable of, but you are limited if you're using the free option. A subscription is cheap though, it's like 11 bucks or 12 bucks a year, which gives you access to all of the tools and features of paper. The layout and UI of paper is beautiful. You can create multiple notebooks with custom covers, change up how you view your notes, and of course, manually organize things. Paper is so good that many artists from around the world choose it over more professional or feature-packed uh, digital sketch pads. 
In case you're wondering, my current email app is Spark. Spark has been the most consistent and reliable client that I've ever used. Plus, it's so nice having a consistent email experience no matter if I'm on Android, Mac OS, or iOS. A Windows app is even in the works, which I'm super excited for. Sliding over to the next page, I have Procreate, which is far more feature-rich versus Paper. However, it's also much more complex, and if you're just getting started, you might find it overwhelming. I'm still learning it myself, however, as of recent, I started using Paper much more because it's easier for me to just open and then, you know, get my thoughts out. That said, just like AstroPad Studio, if you're an artist or graphic designer and you haven't tried Procreate, you really should give it a try. Happy Color is a fun app for wasting time. It's a color by numbers app that has a ton of pictures to choose from for free. Uh, you might think I'm weird, but to me, things like this are therapeutic and help clear my mind. Plus, it's pretty dang fun. Next to Happy Color, I have a word search app. Again, just like the Color by Numbers app, I find this relaxing. Plus, it's cognitive training, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> if you're into word searches or puzzles, you really should try these two apps. You might be surprised. Focus Live is a really cool app that allows you to take portrait mode video. I definitely don't recommend doing this with your iPad Pro because you might look ridiculous, but you can use Focus Live on your iPhone, then send over that portrait video to your iPad using AirDrop or Send Anywhere. From there, Focus Live becomes much more than just a camera app. It's a really feature-packed free mobile video editor. It's a timeline style editor with tons of controls and options like speed ramping, transitions, LUTs or filters, and a lot more. It's also free by the way, and totally worth checking out if you're trying to get started in mobile video editing. iMovie and GarageBand are both new to my iPad, but not in terms of apps, of course. Most of you probably already know what both of these apps are and what they do. While I really don't use iMovie ever, I downloaded it to try to come up with a workflow for beginners. It's an idea for an upcoming video. GarageBand I'm currently using with the Akai MIDI keyboard that I talked about in the beginning. I'm going back to music creation, as I said, and this is just something that will allow me to create on the go. Uh, Ink Hunter is perfect for tattoo lovers, and obviously, I'm a fan of tattoos. I got them all over my body. Um, Ink Hunter will allow you to place a tattoo onto an area of the body using the iPad's camera. Just simply draw a face on the area that you want to place a tattoo and use the in-app camera. It's going to track it and place it almost magically. It works great and allows you to take a picture for future reference. Finally, we have a few games that I've been playing. The first is Call of Duty, which when paired with the 8-bit Do controller is absolutely awesome. Now, the same thing can be said for Shadow Gun War Games, another first-person shooter game. Both are played online and are extremely fun. Uh, then I have Mana Strike, which is Magic the Gathering. I was a huge fan of the card game back in the day, and I collected the crap out of them damn things. So when I found this game, it was super nostalgic, even though it's pretty different. Lastly, Grim Valor is of course on my iPad. It's my go-to mobile video game right now. All of you guys ask me about it. I love everything about this game, including the storyline, the graphics, just how you play it. And overall, it's easily one of the best smartphone games out right now. It's like a cross between Castlevania and Dark Souls. That's pretty much the best way I can describe it. But that's pretty much all of the new apps on my iPad Pro, or at least the ones that I'm currently using routinely. Check out the playlist in the card above for even more iPad-related videos. Let me know what you want to see in my upcoming 2018 versus 2020 iPad Pro comparison. I'm trying to make it a little bit different since it's like a better late than never kind of video. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will see you fantastic people in the next video.